talking more about event sourced systems, what are the benefits of an event sourced architecture? There is of course the obvious benefit of having an audit log that you can reproduce the current state of the application, how you got there. And if you need it some, at some point in the future, you can always have an audit log, what happens to your application in the whole history from the start of the first deployment. Then this also enables you to do some statistics, like um, statistics that, that even haven't been intended uh, from the beginning, like how often did we have a user login and so on and so forth, if you're interested in that things later. As you st uh, store everything atomically that happened to your application from day zero. What else benefits do we have? If you have a current state of the application only, then, as I said, you lose the context how you get there. For example, for a money transaction, if you have a current balance of $100 on your account, why is it 100? Uh, what was it? Or if uh, you have one command in a transaction that actually, uh, actually deposit another $20, what is the context of that? So then you see, well, there was a transaction included, like money um, deposit or money transfer, that um, added money to your account, for example. And this is having the concept, um, having the context of how you get there. So you keep uh, the context um, of all transactions. And as I said on the statistics thing, you always are future proof for later use cases you're not even thinking about. And this is especially true if you have um, a business intelligence uh, department that later on wants to say, okay, actually, since the start of the application, how often does a user log in? Or when a user logs in, then how often they immediately log out again and, and so on and so forth. Or a uh, better example, if you're in an Amazon, how often do you add um, an item to your shopping cart? And then before you check out, which items do you remove and why? and what are the price uh, of the items and so on and so forth. So you could then derive much more information later on that you ever haven't even thought about yet, right? And if you're not using an event source systems, then you would have to implement all this later on. But now the benefit is that you can actually implement stuff in the future and you already have all the information from day one since you have all the atomic events. And if you later think of use cases like this, how many articles did you remove after they went to the um, shopping cart? Then you can derive all the information that's already there. And you're not starting a new application from scratch. And then you can only do that for the future rather than you can do it for the past as you already have the events. Um, the same is true if your application changes. That means you're actually prove to um, and um, prepare for application changes and your events probably won't even change. That means if you um, designed your events to be fully atomic, then you could even derive some other events or some other use cases from the same events that, already, that are already there. What does that mean? Um, and this goes into the same direction like testing. So, for example, you have your event store or your database with all the Atomics events and then later on you can apply the same events to your application and you have to have the same outcome, right? As you apply all the events to the current state and apply all the diffs and then eventually you would have to have the same status quo like before. And then if you, uh, for example, you find a bug in your application like some calculation somewhere is wrong or somewhere you something wrong happened, then you can change it later on and change then the outcome even, right? So you can just, um, just on an old video recorder, replay back and rewind the tape and then replay them back. And the same thing has to happen then again. And of course, if you change your application and then you could reapply your events and your event schema shouldn't change like it is now in a relational database the case. If you change something and you add fields, then obviously um, 
your data model has to change. But in event uh, source systems, you're more safe against that. And then another thing which is um, not necessarily related to event sourcing, but in fact, it makes sense to use it together. It enables event-driven architectures and um, the, able, uh, the ability to scale. Having that said, and this goes on then to the, uh, to the next episodes, you do not necessarily need an um, event-driven architecture or microservices or the ability to scale if you do an event sourced uh, system. So you could fully um, do an event sourced system in an old consistent transactional way, having only one application or at least one database. So to in order to get all the benefits like audit logging, um, you don't necessarily need to be eventually consistent. You can be fully consistent and then just internally in your application, the way it, the architecture works is that it stores all the commands and updates in events, in atomic events, rather than to, uh, um, to have the current status quo in your database um, as a CRUD-based model. So these two things are not necessarily related, event sourcing and um, eventual consistency. But actually, it makes sense, in fact, to apply them together. And in the next episode, I'll introduce event-driven architectures. And then finally, why it makes sense or when it would make sense to combine all these together.